Good morning. My name is Jonaline Reduck, and I will be the liturgist this morning. As we begin worship this morning, let us join together in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise for being with us today and always. You have gathered us here to celebrate you, our creator, our mother, our father, with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Let our worship be all about you as we humbly pray for the Holy Spirit to keep our hearts, minds, and souls. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, amen. Our first hymn this morning is um, page 22 in the songbook. It's called No Matter. Kathy will do a solo for verse 1. Verse 2 and 3 is where everyone else will join. Good morning, and you are indeed welcome in this place. I am not Pastor Leah. I know you're all surprised to hear that. I am Pastor Connie, if you've not met me yet. I am your parish associate, and Pastor Leah is ill. She has COVID, and so I am pinch hitting this morning, but we are going to have a wonderful time in worship together, I trust. Thank you for being here this morning. We're going to welcome some new members, and we're going to sing some great songs, and we're going to hear some fabulous music from the choir and the soloist. What could be better than that? So, I invite you now.
to turn your hearts and your minds to the worship of God. I do want to say one thing as we get ready to start. Uh, if you look at the liturgy for the reception of new members, you'll see that there's a UCC affirmation of faith, and it says 855 in the New Century Hymnal, which is your regular hymnal. It's a section of the hymnal we don't use a lot. So you may want to take a minute and see if you can find 855 because we're going to do that prayer together in unison as part of that liturgy. So now let's turn together to worship God. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. There are different ways to serve the same living God, and we can each do different things. Yet the same God works in all of us and helps us in everything we do. God put our bodies together in such a way that even the parts that seem the least important are valuable. God did this to make all parts of the body work together smoothly, with each caring about the others. If one part of our body is honored, the whole body will be happy. Together, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of Christ's body. Today, the circle of faith, which is this community of care and concern, drops its hands so that others might join us within the circle. We invite Joel Caldero and Kelly Tull to come forward to be received into membership into the Community United Church. I also invite Tom Ward and Joel Brotherton, their partners in faith, to come forward. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home. And we now celebrate the addition of your gifts to this community of faith. And now we'll let each partner in faith introduce the person that they've partnered with. Are you starting, Tom? I would like to welcome Joel, who lives in Christian fellowship with God's love in his heart. One thing Joel would like to, for you to know about him is that he's grateful to be a new member of this church. As a member of this church, I now invite you to open our circle wide so that he may join hands with us. I would say that Joel and Kelly's statements of faith are in the bulletin. If you want to say something, you can. You don't have to. <laughs> That's perfectly okay. And folks, I have the privilege this morning to introduce to you someone who has chosen to be in our family, Kelly Toll. Something that we try in our service this morning to do with our new members is to also say a little something that is not 
in the bulletin today. So Kelly has her family, her mother and father here today. We welcome you. But also Kelly does not just have a two-legged family, if you will. Kelly's home is filled also with three members of her family that are four-legged. We uh, commemorate today that she shares her home with two pit bulls, Justice, and this, I love this, Maybell Moo, <laughs> and also one calico cat, Ginger. Welcome today to this, your new spiritual home. We welcome you. Do my, do my next part here. It's always good to play with fire. We now ask these questions of you who are joining in covenant as members of Community United Church of Christ, that we may walk the road of faith together. Will you share your gifts with this community and in return accept the gifts of this community will, that will, accept the gifts this community will give you, seeking opportunities to be of service and supporting its mission with your time, talents, and treasure? If so, please answer, I will. Will you join with this congregation in empowering one another to do justice, encouraging one another to love kindness, and accompanying one another to walk humbly with our God, loving God and your neighbor as yourself? If so, please answer, I will. Do you promise to grow in faith and to be a faithful and loving member of this local church, keeping covenant with its members and with the wider United Church of Christ? If so, please answer, I do. We invite the congregation to stand in body or spirit. Let us, members and friends of Community United Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy into the common life of this church. We promise our, our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of what it means to be a disciple. By the Spirit's power, may we continue to grow together, journey together, and work together to create a more just, peaceful, and inclusive world. Through Christ's example, may we share love, hope, peace, and joy in this world. David has made an excellent catch. There is a typo, and it is not 855, it's 885. So it's just a couple of pages over from where you were if you found 855 a few minutes ago, and I'll give you a second to find that. Let us join together to affirm our faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, 
to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Today is a great day. Joel and Kelly, on behalf of Community United Church of Christ, I welcome you into the membership of this church. And we have certificates to remind you of the day when you became a member of this community of care and concern, and some gifts. And I think those are behind John Alune. We welcome you into the company of this local church. Let the people say, Amen. As we share signs of peace with one another, you are invited to either stay in your pew or offer a wave or a peace sign to those around you, or to move from your space and exchange signs of peace with one another. As a church, we recognize that some folks may want to remain from shaking hands. Respect one another's lead in this as we pass the peace. Peace be with you.
Later in worship, we will offer, uh, offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary, worshiping with us remotely, or here in person, sorry, excuse me, you are invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Please go to community-ucc.org backslash pray. This is a Google form. Or you can scan the QR code found here, or there are prayer cards in the pew racks that you may fill out and hand to the usher. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. Pastor Connie taught me a new word this morning. It's called paraclete, and it means advocate. So when you see advocate in the, the reading from this morning, you can also substitute the word paraclete. Connie might be able to explain that a little bit better than I did, but that's okay. A sacred reading from the Gospel, John 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me and obey the command I give you, I will ask the one who sent me to give you another advocate, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept since the world neither sees her nor recognizes her. But you can recognize the spirit because she remains with you and will be within you. I won't leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. A little while now, and the world will see me no more. But you'll see me, because I live, and you will live as well. On that day, you'll know that I am in God, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who obey the commandments are the ones who love me, and those who love me will be loved by Creator God. I, too, will love them, and will reveal myself to them. Together let us say, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Please join me in hymn 11, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. i 
This week, the irises in my yard started to bloom. It's something that I look forward to every single year. You see, my mother loved irises. And the ones that bloom in my yard now first bloomed in hers years and years and years ago now. Although it has been 18 years since she died, those flowers keep us connected across space and time and even eternity. In tending them, in keeping them, I find my heart and soul kept, anchored to what matters. We human beings tend to do that, don't we? To hang on to things that belong to someone that we loved, as if they were pieces of the person, something tangible to hold in our hands and our hearts long after they are gone from our sight. Not just the irises for me, but an old sweater of my dad's to wrap around me when the world is cold. A book inscribed by a friend gone way too soon. A note from a beloved mentor no longer with us. The wedding rings that remind me of the love John and I shared. What is it that you keep to remind yourself of who you are, of where you've come from, to remind you of what matters most? What do you keep that keeps you grounded? In our text today, the time is that night we remember as Monday Thursday, that night when Jesus is telling his disciples goodbye, at least for now. Now, in the other Gospels, it's not always clear just how much Jesus knows and when he knows it. But in this Gospel, the writer never wants us to forget that Jesus is God come down to earth, that Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. And so in today's verses, Jesus knows what is coming. He knows that only a few more hours stand before him and being abandoned by the ones he loves, between him and a horribly painful death on a cross. He knows that the grave is coming, but he also knows that resurrection will come, new life will come. But his disciples, they don't know those things. They can't know what lies ahead because they are mere human beings, just like you and like me. Oh, they may have suspicions that things aren't going all that well. They may have heard what Jesus has told them about dying and rising again in three days, but they don't comprehend. They don't understand. Their world is about to be rocked, the ground crumbling beneath their feet. Everything they think they know, every reason they have to hope, is about to be shaken loose by the events that are about to unfold. And so Jesus wants to give them something to hold on to when that happens, something to remember, something they can keep in the midst of the chaos, something that will keep them until the new day dawns and a new world begins. What he gives them is a command, a new commandment to go beside the one about loving God with all their beings and loving their neighbors as themselves. Love one another, he tells them, just as I have loved you, so you must also love one another. On this night, in that upper room so long ago, he has already given them an example of how to put that love into action, kneeling at their feet like a servant to wash the dust and weariness of the road away. He has taken the loaf and the cup, the ordinary elements of their ordinary days, and transformed them into signs of love that they do not yet understand. This is my body broken for you. 
This is the new covenant sealed in my blood. But on the other side of the cross, on the other side of the resurrection, those actions will take on new depth and new meaning. And so will these words about loving one another. That's what he wants them to remember about their time together. That's what he wants them to hang on to when everything seems to be falling apart and danger is all around. That's what he wants them to, well, keep. And here is the mystery wrapped up in this command. It cannot be kept on one's own. To love as Jesus loved means to move outside ourselves, outside our own fear and misgivings, our own distress and discouragement, so that we connect with one another, so that another's needs become as important to us as our own. Jesus knows that only love has the power to lift us from our self-absorption and free us to live the life he wants for us, the life he wills for us, the life he dies to give us. Only love can lead us into abundant life, not just in the world to come, but in the here and now. No matter what threatens to overwhelm us, no matter what demons lurk outside our door. The love God sends to us in Jesus Christ calls us to live not for ourselves alone, but for the sake of others. The love of Christ wants to live in and through us in our time, too. Jesus knows it won't be easy, not for the disciples back then and not for us today. When things fall apart, when life seems overwhelming, our first instinct is to run away and hide, just like the disciples did when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden that night. Now, while self-preservation has its purpose, it isn't meant to be the sum total and end of our lives. Love is. Giving ourselves away in love, following the example set for us by Christ is. The command to love one another as Jesus loves us keeps us connected to God, rooted in God, grounded in God, and it keeps us connected to one another, related to one another, no matter what. When we keep it, it keeps us it helps us remember what really matters. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus says. And here is the good news. We are not left on our own to do that, not left to try to figure out how to love as Jesus loved. He also promises the disciples and us that he will not leave you orphaned. To be orphaned in that culture was to be utterly alone, without a family or a place to call one's own, completely vulnerable, dependent on the passing fancy of strangers. Jesus promises them that they will have one another, that they will have a place to belong, and even more, he promises that God will send an advocate who will be with them forever to walk beside them, to lead, and to guard, and to guide. That's literally what the original Greek says. That's what paraclete means, the one who comes beside, the one who walks with. That advocate is the Holy Spirit, of course, and that promise is for us, too. The advocate not only helps us to keep the command to love as Christ loved, the Spirit makes it possible for us to do that. The Spirit keeps our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, as Paul puts it later in his letter to the Philippians. The Spirit helps us remember what matters most. If you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my commandments. 
And in the keeping of them, we will find ourselves held, embraced, kept in a love that is greater and more beautiful than anything that we can dream or imagine, a love far, far more welcome than even the first iris in spring. Oh, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift of love. Amen. The words of Hebrews 10 calls us to generosity this season. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep God's promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. Let what we offer encourage one another, as a resurrection people, let us be signs of hope for our weary world. Amen. This is the moment in the worship where we share the joys and concerns of our congregation, friends, and community. Please take a look at the ongoing prayer requests in your bulletin. Join me now as we hold the community's needs in our hearts. As I read each petition aloud, please join me in saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Carla asks for prayers of sympathy to the family of Earl Stewart upon his death. Earl and his wife, Roxy Howard, started attending worship at CUCC last summer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jean asks for 
prayers for a dear friend who has been hospitalized for several weeks with a difficult to diagnose medical problem. Also prayers for the Pataki family who are traveling from South Carolina to Milwaukee today to introduce their younger son to his great grandmas. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ilsa asks for prayers for friend Lee and his family. Lee's father, Al, has started hospice care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kathy asks for prayers of thanksgiving for Kelly and Joel, who are already making meaningful contributions to our church community. Welcome. God, in your mercy. Yes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lance asks for prayers of quick recovery for those with COVID and prayers of understanding to respect wishes of those who are, who are immuno, immunocompromised, whether that is space for them, wearing masks, or even testing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, receive these prayers. Let your many mercies shine upon us. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy One, you promised to never leave us orphaned, alone, to face a sometimes harsh and unforgiving world. You promise your spirit to walk with us, to lead, to guide, to guard, to save. And so we pray, come now once more to be beside us wherever we are, whatever we are facing. And yet, even as we pray that prayer, we remember that you have never truly left us, not even when we were unaware of your presence with us. And so we also pray, open our hearts to know your love surrounding us in every moment. Open our eyes to see the opportunities you place in our way so that we might love as you love. Open our hands to reach out to others with that love so that your world might be blessed and transformed until that day when your reign comes in all its fullness of grace, mercy, peace, and justice. We ask this in the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ, your beloved one. Amen. It did not make it into your bulletin, but I believe this is the time for the commissioning of the community. And so if you have something that you need to share with the community, I invite you to come down, uh, come across just like we always do, and then back to your seat. And so there are announcements on your green sheet. Some of them are rather important, especially in terms of opportunities to serve this summer. Uh, with our students gone, we have a lot of vacancies. So please take a look at that and see what you can do. Hi folks, I'm Kathy, your music director, and I just wanted to highlight a couple music opportunities that are in your green sheet and explain why I'm asking for them now. Um, you'll see there's something here asking if folks would like to be in a chime choir. In the past, sometimes we've had a sort of an intergenerational chime choir, which is a really fun opportunity for people who don't love to sing, but still have some musical gifts to offer. Um, that's something we probably wouldn't start until the fall, so when you're looking at that, just think about the future. It's something we'll resume if there's enough people who might be able to do it, and it, there's all sorts of options of, I might want to do this once, or I might want to do this many times. So take a look at that. 
Um, and on the back side of your green sheet, you'll see at the very bottom, we're looking for singers for our summer music series. So choir pauses starting next week will be our final Sunday. And um, then Leah is doing a series with stuff from The Wizard of Oz and The Wiz and so, Wicked. Um, and so some of those solos are so fun to sing. If you're interested in doing one of those, go ahead and sign yourself up on the sheet. And Aaron is an awesome accompanist for musical theater, so you'll have a lot of fun working with him. But if we can get that organized early, it will help me as I go away to Korea for several weeks to not have to think about that all being sorted. So thanks, guys. Hi, um, I'm Amanda. I'm, with, I'm here on behalf of Campus Ministry. You may have noticed we're going to do a kickball team this summer. Um, and if you're interested, you should join because uh, we need at least eight people every week starting in June. And with vacations, you know, people are in and out. So if you're interested, our goal is not to be the best team, it's to be the most fun team. So if you're not, if you're like, I can't do it, you can. It's going to be great. So just see me afterwards. I have a form you can fill out. I've already gotten a couple emails I'm really excited about, so it'll be awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma. I just wanted to remind you um, that if you are kind of in the grad school, postdoc, just post-graduation kind of life stage, or wanting to try and do some little meetups to get to know each other a little better, um, it is in the front of your bulletin, but our first meeting we're going to do on a Tuesday, May 30th at 6.30. The plan is to do like a snacky potluck thing, just bring a bag of chips, some cookies, whatever, um, and we'll hang out at Japan House and just get to know each other. And if you have any questions, let me or Leah know once she feels better, and we'll try to answer them. Hi, I'm Peg Wade. Uh, Tuesday is our monthly retirees lunch, and we'll be at Sweet Basil Cafe at 11.30 this Tuesday. Um, if you haven't already, let me know. Let me know you want to come. We're going to update our uh, reservation there tomorrow. And we, as always, will provide rides if anyone needs a ride. Also, anybody that wants to join us, you're welcome. We'll, we let anybody join us if you'd like to. Um, just let me know, because like I said, tomorrow I plan to update the reservation. Thanks. Thank you all so much. I invite you now to stand as you're able, and we're going to close with Go My Children With My Blessing, which is number 82 in the hymn. Go now, knowing that you are loved with an everlasting love that will never, ever, ever let you go. Go now out into the world carrying that love with you. Let it shape all that you say and all that you do, that God might bless the world through you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you 
now and forever. Amen.